Hey guys, it's your crazy teacher lady again um, with another lesson that I think is fun because I like puzzles and I like to um, pick things apart and, um, I don't know, rearrange them in different ways. So um, this lesson is on rational expressions. So as you see, if they're expressions, we're not going to be solving anything, but we're going to be taking rational um, numbers. So um, what we just talked about in the last section, like there's... Um, a function in the numerator and the denominator, simplifying those. So kind of a little bit about what we did um, in the last section when we looked at um, asymptotes and holes, but also um, just simplifying and multiplying and dividing. So vocabulary, a rational expression is the quotient of two polynomials. So any two polynomials divided. A rational expression in its simplest form uh, when the numerator and denominator are polynomials that have no common divisors. So we're going to take and factor as much as possible, get rid of everything that we can, and see what we got left. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. So simplifying a rational expression. What is x squared plus 7x plus 10 divided by x squared minus 3x minus 10 in simplest form? So now, in order to simplify this, we're going to have to factor the numerator, factor the denominator. So I need to ask myself, what are multiples of 10 that add up to be 7? Well, 2 and 5, those are good. So my numerator is x plus 2, x plus 5. Now for my denominator, I need to think of numbers that multiply to be negative 10, but add to be negative 3. What about negative 5 and positive 2? That makes negative 10 and negative 3. Uh, so x plus 2, x minus 5. Okay, so now we've rewritten um, those polynomials in factored form. We have to look and see if we have any common factors. Remember, we can't just cancel out a 10 and the x squared. That's not okay. We're not going to be killing any kitties anytime soon. Um, and sorry, if you're not in my class and you don't know what that means, we're not actually killing kitties. Um, it's, it's a poster. Anyway, so we're going to take um, x plus 2 as a factor in both the numerator and the denominator. So in its simplest form, x plus 5 over x minus 5. We can't cancel these because if we were to pick a number um, like, say, 3. 3 plus 5 is 8. 3 minus 5 is negative 2. These numbers are not the same. So we can't cancel it because the signs in the in between our two um, fact or our two terms are different, so you can't cancel that. So x plus five divided by x minus five is our answer. Uh, do we have any restrictions? Is there anything that x cannot be? When we're dividing, what's the only thing that you can never ever 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 do? You can't divide by zero. So what would make either one of these terms be zero? Negative two and positive five. So x cannot equal negative 2 or positive 5. Um, I know what you're thinking, but Mrs. Ekblad, there's only x minus 5 left. Why do we need that negative 2? Because you always go back to your original problem. Anything that can make your numerator um, be 0 in your original problem, you cannot include. All right? Okay, so I want you to go ahead and I want you to work on these. It's going to take some practice. It's going to take some time. Um, I'll go ahead and do the first one with you. So, um, because, you know, you have to choose the hardest of all the things, right? Okay, so we're going to take our numbers. I have 24 divided by 6. 24 divided by 6 is, or negative 6 is, negative 4. I have x cubed divided by x squared, and that's x, and y squared divided by y cubed, and that's y left in the denominator. And I know um, x cannot equal 0 and y cannot equal 0. That's it. Okay, so I want you to do um, this one and this one. This is going to be your lesson check that you're going to do with your partner um, in the beginning of class tomorrow. All right, when we multiply rational expressions, um, what's the product in simplest form? of x squared plus x minus 6 divided by x minus 5 times x squared minus 25 over x squared plus 4x plus 3. 
Now, um, when we multiply fractions, let me just do a little quick review. If we have two-thirds and we're multiplying it to, say, six-eighths, how do we multiply fractions? Well, we multiply fractions by multiplying across the numerator. Two times six is twelve. And then multiplying across on the denominator. <clears throat> and eight times three is twenty-four. So we could say reduce this is one half. Is there another way that we could have gotten to the same answer? Well sure. If we have two-thirds times six over eight, <clears throat> we can look and see, hey, I'm gonna multiply and divide by a factor of six or a factor of three. So let me reduce this, make this one and this two. Also this here. I could reduce this, make this one, make this four. And then I multiply across. One times two is two. One times four is four. And still one half. We could have also reduced again and said, hey, look, that's one, that's two. And just said that it's one half and caught at that middle step. So we're going to apply this um, same basic principle to our radical functions. So we're going to factor them, reduce our factors first, and then multiply them. All right. So let's try that. Um, okay, so we need to factor x squared plus x minus 6, a number that multiplies to be negative 6 but adds to be positive 1. So x plus 3, x minus 2. We can't do anything with this x minus 5, so we leave it on the bottom. And then times, I need a number that multiplies to be negative 25 but adds to be 0. I have x plus 5, x minus 5. And then here, a number that multiplies to be 3 adds to be 4. x plus 1, x plus 3. Okay, now we have all of our factors. We need to go through and see if there's anything we can cancel out of both the numerator and the denominator. Well, I see an x minus 5 here and here. I see an x plus 3 here and here. And now my only factors that I have left are x minus 2 times x plus 5 over x plus 1. I'm okay if you leave it like this. You could also take and foil the top. So you get, let's see, x squared minus 2x plus 5x is plus 3x minus 10 over x plus 1. Either one of these answers is perfectly fine. Now we also have to make sure we state our restrictions. So anything that can make a denominator be 0 anywhere. Um, so we need to look at um, our factors. So we had the x minus 5. So we know x cannot equal positive 5. Now when we factored this, we got x plus 1, so x cannot equal negative 1. And we got plus 3, so x cannot equal negative 3. So those are our three restrictions. So here is the answer to that question. Simplest form with restrictions. Wasn't that fun? It was so fun. Okay, now I also want you to do this one. I want you to um, compare with your partner along with those other two that you should have already completed. So if you didn't do them, make sure you pause the video. Come on, let's be honest. Okay, and dividing rational expressions. So before we do it with rational expressions, just a quick review of fractions. So when we have fractions, if we have two-thirds divided by one-half, how do we divide fractions? Um, a lot of you learned it this way, keep, change, flip. You keep your first fraction the same, two-thirds. You change your division to a multiplication, and you flip from one-half to two over one. So it becomes four-thirds. So it's really a multiplication problem. But you have to change your second or your right-handed um, quotient. You have to flip it, make it the inverse. Okay, so let's apply that with this problem. Okay, so I have my first one. I'm just going to go ahead and leave it. Um, but I don't like the way it's written. So I'm going to rewrite it as negative x plus 2. 
And usually when we factor, we don't get a negative in front. So I'm going to factor out a negative and make it x minus 2. Can you see how that, when you distribute that back through, you get negative x plus 2, which is the same as 2 minus x? All right. And then on the bottom, let's see, I have x plus 1, x plus 1. And then I'm divided by, but I'm going to change this to a multiplication problem by flipping these over. So instead, I'm going to put this one on the top. So x squared minus 1, I'm going to put here. So this is now a multiplication problem. So this is um, x squared minus 1. Oh, I forgot to factor it. So this is x plus 1, x minus 1. And now my numerator is going to come and be my denominator. So I have x plus 5, x minus 2. Okay, now I need to go through and see what I can get rid of. I have a minus 2 and a minus 2. I have a plus 1 and a plus 1. And all my other factors are different. So what I'm left with in the top is over here I have the negative. And then I have x minus 1. And in my denominator, I have x plus 1, x plus 5. You can write it like this. I'm fine with that. Or you can write it as negative x plus 1 over x squared plus 6x plus 5. I would prefer the second one um, to show that you know how to use your rules of factoring and all of those things. It just looks nicer as well, um, but I will accept either answer. Now, when we do our restrictions, division is a little bit different because you have to make sure you go back and you look at everything that was in the denominator at any point in the problem. So you need to go to your denominator that's on the left, and that factored into x plus 1, x plus 1. So we know x cannot equal negative 1. Okay, look at your original denominator, which became your numerator here. So x cannot equal negative 1 again. x cannot be positive 1. Also, your numerator became a denominator when we change it to a multiplication problem. So we have to also include this. So x cannot be negative 5 or positive 2. So when you do division ones, it's everything. The left-hand side is just the bottom one. The right-hand side is both the top and the bottom because at some point they were both in the denominator, whether it was the original problem or whether it was the one that you changed it to. So make sure you look at all three places for your restrictions. All right. Um, and since I know these are a little more complicated, I'm going to do this one with you. I think this is the last thing I have left anyway. And I don't want to miss out on the fun. Okay, so let's go ahead and factor the top. Numbers that multiply to be 4 add to be 5. x plus 4. x plus 1. Um, numbers that multiply to be negative 12 add to be positive 1. That's x plus 4. x minus 3. Now we're going to change this division to a multiplication problem. We're going to switch our denominator and our numerator. Um, so I'm going to look at this 2x squared minus 6x. Well, I notice they both have a 2 and an x inside of them. So I'm going to factor out a 2x. And that leaves me with x minus 3. My numerator and my denominator is now from my numerator. So that's x plus 1, x minus 1. Okay, so now I can go through and look and see, um, do I have any factors that I can get rid of? Well, I have an x minus 3 here and here. I have an x plus 1 here and here. I have an x plus 4 here and here. So what am I left with? I've got 2x and x minus 1. So 2x over x minus 1. I can't do anything else with that. Okay, so I've done that part. Now I need to find my restrictions. What can x not be? x cannot equal what? So I look for my original denominators. So I factored already, so I can see that negative 4 and positive 3 are both going to make zeros. Um, I factored here, and I can see this one, 0, this one, positive 3, which we already have. And then look at my denominator for my multiplication is positive 1 and negative 1. 
So negative 4, 3, 0, 1, and negative 1 are all restrictions because if I use them at any point, I would be dividing by 0 somewhere along the way. And we can't do it. All right. That is all I have for you. Hope you have a great night. Don't forget to do your practice quiz and be ready for your quiz tomorrow.